C213 here, and this is the video you have all been waiting for. Um, this is my official review of the JBL Extreme. Now, I've had this thing for about a week. I can't exactly remember. I think I'm looking at six to seven days, so that's a week, basically. Um, so, I have yet to send back my JBL Extreme, uh, my Beats Pill XL, um, because... Uh, I was planning on doing this video two weeks in, but all you guys have been asking for, and I've had plenty of play time with this, uh, with this JBL speaker, so I thought I'd do the review uh, now. Um, now. I'm gonna go ahead and start up the Pill XL, so we can do another better sound comparison again, because I know sound comparisons are the best thing I can do, and I don't have any fancy mics or anything like that, um, but I can tell you that. Uh, you know, I, I will give you the best comparison I can, and certainly, hopefully, you can at least hear the places where the extreme really w wins, which is with bass and treble. Um, so, first impressions that I gave last week were that it's bigger than the um, XL. Now, I'm going to remove these straps just to make this video a little easier to talk about, but... Um... Okay, small indications. So the strap, um, we'll leave small, I'm going to zoom in, macro the camera here. We'll leave small, oh boy, hold on. Let me go in here. We'll leave small metal shavings right in here, if you can see that. Um, and the metal shavings uh, don't seem to be an issue. Um, and the, the, the strap seems to work fine and it's not a structural thing. Um, what it is, is these are played with some sort of chrome type stuff. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure it's some sort of dark chrome and it's just not played very well. So while the metal does seem strong, it doesn't feel like cheap pot metal, you know, these will get a little bit flaky and then they'll get a little dirty right in the, uh, the holds up here. Now, when it comes to battery life. I've, I've read a lot of other reviews and other people online that said that the battery is good but that the gauge is inaccurate and I have to agree with them there. Um, I haven't drained this thing completely but I've run it for like, I think the longest I ran it was 7 hours just straight at about 50 to 60 percent volume and even at that level of run, t uh, of, of, of run time, uh, it didn't go down one bar. Okay, and there's a total of five lights at the bottom. Um, I'm going to... Let's see here. There you go. Any button will activate the lights. And there's five lights. Now, when you run a speaker for about a quarter of its runtime... No. I'm shit at math. A third of its runtime, and not a single bar out of five goes down, a dot... That means that this gauge is not linear. And, you know, I understand, you know, batteries are hard to do gauges of and rarely are batteries in their power distribution ever linear. But this is a lithium ion battery um, and it should be much better. It, it, they should be able to make a much better and more accurate gauge. Um, for example, when I was on the Pill XL, I never felt like the, uh, the indicators for the battery, which it has four out of five right now, were ever inaccurate. So when I was using this, um, when I looked at it and I saw four out of five dots, I'm like, I got four fifths of the battery. And when I plug in things to charge using the uh, built-in charge port on the Phil XL, um, and it would drain the battery pretty quickly. And I didn't feel like it would drain it slower at first and then faster later. It was a linear thing. Same with playing audio on here. Um, so it was hard for me to get a full picture of exactly the battery life. Now, if you look at the gauge, it, it looks great. And I feel like there's a logic behind that maybe... Either they didn't put in uh, a higher quality circuit, or um, where, where I'm thinking maybe more of the issue is, is that, uh, you know, it, it's a perception thing. They think that rarely, and the same thing goes into when cars are designed. I, this is, uh, it's actually true. If you look at most cars the same way with their gas tank, most people don't, aren't going to use the speaker till it's completely dead. So like most people aren't going to run the speaker for 15 hours straight at half volume. They might run it at full volume for an hour. So, um, 
And then those people are going to go out, write a review, tell their friends, etc. Right? And the same is true of a lot of cars is that people don't, most of the time don't really drive the car very, very long or very, very far at a time before they fill up. And so you'll notice that in the beginning when you're driving, you can drive 100 miles or something and the gas gauge won't move, right? And then you get to like 200, you, or you, maybe not 100 miles, maybe like 60 miles, right? And it only moves a little bit. And then you drive 100 miles and it drops the half tank, right? And I think the same is true here. So the battery gauge is a little iffy. Other features, you compare multiple Bluetooth devices. I'm pretty sure it said like three to five. I don't remember, but I know it's at least two. And so you do that by hitting the Bluetooth pair button. It will show up on another device and you pair it with that. Now the issue I have with this is it doesn't reconnect with all the other, and I think this was mentioned before by other people as well. It doesn't reconnect with all the devices. So if I pair to my iPhone, and then I pair to my computer, I have to repair the devices um, when, I'm, when, when I shut off the speaker and turn it back on again. The only thing that will automatically pair is the last device that was connected. Um, so like let's say my iPhone was the last to be playing audio through it, then when I restart the speaker, only my iPhone will pair to the speaker. Um, but again, I still think that having the feature of multiple audio sources is a lot like when I used to have a um, Soul Republic deck. Have you ever seen the deck speaker? It's this like flat thing and it's got this little bass port. It's not even in the same category as this or especially the extreme. But nonetheless, it had a really cool feature called heist mode. And heist mode basically allowed you to just flip a switch on the back of the speaker and then you could allow multiple devices to pair to the speaker. And then Whoever started playing audio would essentially hijack the speaker, or in their case, I guess they said heist because you can steal the, the, the feed. And um, it was a nice feature because if you're at a party, you know, and it's like a, not a casual, not like one with a DJ, but like, you know, just a bunch of your friends come over and you're just chilling or whatever, and you want to have, all of you want to have the chance to play some music, by doing that, you can all play your own music one after the other and not have to like, plug in a little like connector to 3.5 millimeter or go through the pairing process every time you want to do it and it's great and so having this on here is great I will say that on this the volume is not much louder at all than the Pill XL and I would argue that in some senses because of the way the volume control works on the Pill XL it can get louder do I think it's because of hardware that this can get louder like in terms of the speaker drivers and all that no I don't I don't think that the, uh, the Pill XL is mechanically more capable of producing loud sound than this. But what I will say is I, I still find the volume control a little bit annoying. For most sources of audio, it's fine. The only gripe I have is when you have a YouTube video or even a song. I mean, I know you can adjust the song's volume manually in iTunes, but it's a little late once it's on your phone. Um, if the volume is really low on the song, even if you crank this all the way up, it's only touching your system volume, right? So it's not going to uh, have its own volume control. So the volume of the, the, the audio source in your uh, whatever device you're using is low. The audio coming out of here is going to be low. And I found several cases when I did a test between the two speakers, the Pill XL was louder. Not because it's actually louder normally given the same, you know, like a level audio source, uh, like a normal uh, volume uh, file, it's when you have the low volume files that having a separate volume control really makes a difference. And I think that's something that they could be done with software. So if they ever wanted to, you know, for example, for instance, it could be a mode, right? So you, if you want easy, simple volume control, because I will say it's nice to be able to control your phone's volume from here too, that should be a mode. But then there should also be a mode that allows you to control a separate volume like when you have aux, like when you plug in an you know, input to the thing. Now another thing I want to cover is, um, let's see, brain fart, totally forgot what I was going to say. Um, damn, I am totally out of it. Oh, now I remember. So. What I wanted to cover was when you play a song, and this was an issue um, other viewers brought up as well, 
that when you first start playing a song, um, there is some delay. Now, I've noticed a lot of speakers do that. The Pill XL wasn't one of those um, as bad as the JBL Extreme, um, but it still was there. And I think for the Pill XL, more of the issue that I found was that there was lag. So there was like transfer time or there was some processing or something was happening because if you were to start a video um, at, you know, at one second, the audio would start another and it would never catch up. And so the only way I could get them to sync again was to sort of tap, you know, tap in, so play and pause the video quickly several times and then it would sort of like jump and then it would kind of catch up. Um, with the JBL, I don't find that to be the issue, but the issue then is instead of it, you know, coming in as soon as it can, it's like a two second period, uh, you know, quiet period where the audio just doesn't come out of the speaker. Um, and so if you're watching a video that, you know, it's like, especially like, and I don't know how many of you guys still watch Vines, but you know, every now and then I'd see them on my feed, right? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it. If you start a Vine, especially since it's only six seconds long, if you miss two seconds of the Vine, it's over. Why did you even bother, right? And so it's annoying. And that's another thing I noticed too. On Facebook, Facebook video has serious problems with the speaker, at least on my phone. It, nine times out of ten, it won't play. And the only way I can get the audio, well, the, it'll, it'll play, but there's no audio. And the only way I can get the audio to work is to play another audio source, like out of my uh, out of my um, music or like YouTube or something else, and then go back to the video and tap and pause and play again. And then it will sort of jump and then it will start playing again. And it's really irritating to me because I never had that problem with Pill. Um, in addition, when you have different tracks, if you're going from whether it's in your music or I, uh, Apple Music or Beats Music like I use because I haven't updated my phone yet, um, you, you'll you get um, Spotify, whatever, right? If you go from track to track, there used to be a delay. So it was just like when you started the audio source, uh, when you started playing on the speaker first off, it would happen also between tracks, which was terrible because I mean, basically you missed the first three seconds of every song you're listening to. Um, finally, when they did the update and then recently came out with an update on the JBL Connect app, I did that, solved the problem, okay? And so I want to demonstrate those things to you right now. So again, I'm going to use a non-copyrighted source of audio. I'm going to line the speakers up next to each other like this. Um, and I'm going to point them out like this versus this, when whatever which one is playing. Um, let me go ahead. And I'm going to put the link to the audio in the description because last my last video, somebody had said, you know, they wanted to know where it was. I responded to the comment. I don't know if they saw it, but I put it in the description of that video. This is going to have uh, full um, info in the description. Um, so we're going to start off with the, let's see, we're going to start off with the extreme. Um, let me just pair up with the uh, XL here. I think it's paired to something else. I don't know what it is. Let's see here. All right, we'll pair it up with the XL. We're going to start with the XL first. All right, and we're going to start at five bars of volume. And that's the other thing I found is they're not equal. So five bars on here is not here. So I'll try to get them as equal as possible. Um, here we go. This is a, a free trap instrumental beat called Cocaine. Um, heat, um, this is produced by Heat on the Beat. And I will put the link in the description. Notice the gap, gap time.
Now I wanted you guys to notice right there and then, I'm pretty sure that was pretty obvious, switching to this, or it would be equivalent to starting the audio on the Beats Pill XL, instantaneous, right? I mean, at least compared to this. When I switch back to this, it is just, it gives you the same effect as when I start playing something on the, on the um, extreme, and that there's a huge delay. It's almost two seconds long. Um, and uh, I think that's the only frustrating thing. Um, in addition, um, I'm hoping you guys can hear the difference um, in audio. The Pill XL just sounds so much more muffled than the Extreme does. In addition, the bass on the uh, the XL just sounds like I'm hitting a table. It just sounds like, and it's a good table. I'll tell you that some good ass wood, but it still sounds like I'm just, you know. Whereas the um, the extreme actually reproduces the low end instruments, and it's to the point where you can hear the different things. You can hear 808 clap, and you can hear the the bass hit, um, and it sounds different versus the Pill XL, which has a tendency to make all heavy bass sound, songs sound the same. Um, so now I'm going to crank the volume up a little bit. Um, I think we're at almost halfway right now on both speakers, so I'm going to go ahead and bring the sound up. So we're gonna, I'm gonna do it slowly on each. So we're gonna start here with the extreme, uh, we'll start with the Pill XL like we did last time, and then we'll go over to the extreme. Here we go. Alright guys, so I hope that gave you a little bit of a sample, and I'm, I'm really hoping at some point I'll be able to get a higher quality mic so I can do a, a, at least a better um, comparison with this, um, and I'll hopefully we get some recordings before I send this back. But here, here's what uh, I want you to notice too, is at least, I can't tell um, if, if you're going to hear this, but when you listen to these in person, the first time I listened to them too, I thought instantly, I was like, oh, the Pill XL is more bass. Until I really took time to listen to it, and then I realized I'd been misled. And here's why. The Pill XL is so terrible at reproducing, you know, mids especially, and, and, and a lot of treble, that when you hear the full range of sound coming out of the JBL, it sounds like there's no bass. But it's really because there's just more treble. Um, and there's way more bass, but because there's way more of everything, uh, you, get, you get the impression that this speaker has more bass. But then when you really listen to it, like when you turn it up all the way, or even, especially at low volumes where you can discern different instruments and stuff, you'll hear that it just doesn't reproduce the sound correctly. Um, and it's one of those things where you're going to have to listen to it for yourself, or listen to this if this helps you at all. Because um, just listening to this on its own, I mean, if you listen to any speaker, short of like the shittiest ones you can find, if you listen to any speaker long enough, and only that speaker, eventually you're going to think it sounds great, right? You're going to think, oh, it's great, you know, I can hear the bass, it's all, because you're used to it. 
because you become accustomed to that sound and you quite literally think that that's what, what you're listening to really sounds like. And then when you listen to another speaker, you're blown away because you're hearing stuff you never heard before. And I think that's what's, what's happening here. Um, you know, if I, like I said, I have a few gripes with this thing. The audio before each song and when you start a stream source, terrible, okay? JBL fixed that, all right? That, that's, that's, that's very frustrating. But that doesn't mean this is a shit speaker by any means. I would take this speaker over any other Bluetooth speaker on the market right now for what you get for the price, for the battery. We're talking all around. Yes, you can find better sounding speakers, you know, arguably Harman Kardon, Onyx, or whatever. But for 300 bucks, considering what you get with a with a splash proof case, with a huge 10,000 milliamp hour battery, with you know all the speakers on the market, this has proven to me to be probably one of the best, um, and I've used quite a few. Um, and I will say uh, that the only gripe I have about the, the case itself is this zipper. While it's both both genius, uh, it's also stupid. Um, and, and here's why. While it isn't that hard to, once you get a hang of it, to get, you know, things in here to charge, I still have to, um, I still have to go with the, you know, be the devil's advocate or whatever. And that, is it really so hard to design a flap, I mean, like this? And, you know, yes, you know, it could fall off or whatever, but, you know, there's, you could design a different flap, all right? You could design a replaceable flap. You could design, the, I mean, even though on the Pill XL the charge port is actually open so that doesn't make it splash proof at all, even if I want to get to the other ports, boom, I get them done, I get them done, just like that. And when I remove what's sealing them, I have full access. Whereas when I do this zipper, even after I open it and push back this thing, I feel like I'm digging my finger in a, in a you know, a, you know, like a sandy speaker crotch. You know, I can't really get in there, right? And 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 uh, while I love what it has, you know, and I love having access to the two USB ports, yeah, I can charge two devices. It's easy to get to the charge port and all that. I have to be able to get to it, right? To the audio in, to the update port, which, by the way, seems a little redundant, but I still appreciate it. Um, because you can update the speaker through the, the app, through Bluetooth. So, in conclusion, for $300 on Amazon, this is a fantastic speaker. This is like, blows all the speakers out of the water. And, and I was initially worried at, you know, when I first got it that it was going to be a speaker where if you cranked it up too loud, there'd be too much digital sound processing or DSP, and the bass would suffer. Um, I have since learned that, that is not the case. Um, maybe like a little bit on the hardest of hard, hard hits. So like when you listen to something that's really, really bass heavy, like one of those things where even with these giant rubber feet, which I must add are great, um, the, the speaker would vibrate. Then if you turn it up all the way, I feel like on those songs, you might hear a little diminishment, at least in the sense that the bass would not increase linearly with the volume. Now. That's my final th comment on this speaker before I go because I have a terrible sense of organization and I never organize anything properly so I didn't even bother putting out like a checklist for this video. These feet are great and for a circular or cyl a cylindrical speaker like this you need to have good feet and that is one place where I would tell you the Pill XL shit on itself really badly. Um, so the Pill XL had... <laughs> hit the damn beats button. So the Pill XL came with these little rubber feet. And you might think, oh, that's great. Except already one of them came off and the rest are are just waiting to rip off. I mean they're just they're coming off. The the rubber's separating here. And once you lose those feet, I mean the, the rubber feet on this aren't so much a stabilizing thing because if you look at that as a nice flat base, right? If I just put it down it won't move, right? I can even put it the other way because of the way the handle is designed. This part is the top and I can put it upside down. It'll it still won't move. The problem isn't that. The problem is that they're shock absorbers. And like shock absorbers in your car, they prevent the bouncing. And without the rubber feet, which this already is missing one, it will, on any hard surface, it will just vibrate and sound like shit. And 
when you pay a lot of money for a speaker, you know, it's very frustrating when they put little dinky stuff like this. Because I even thought when I bought this, I was like, this is one of the most attractive Bluetooth speakers I've seen. I mean, I, I definitely like it considering its size, the way they've made it is quite nice. But by no means is this an ugly speaker. In fact, I'd argue in this color combination, the black looks great too. It looks just, it looks gnarly in a good way, all right? Um, and and um, with the red, with the, is that orange or red? I'm really, it, I think it's orange. Uh, orange, red logo looks great. Um, so in conclusion, the JBL Extreme is an excellent purchase. And if you're a little bit hesitant on, on spending $300, I guarantee you if you wait a few months, maybe even a month or two, there'll be somewhere that's selling it for at least $25 less than $300. Um, not to mention, though, if you have an XL, send it in, and then you will have the money you need to get this. You will have more than enough money to get your Extreme. Because um, Apple's going to send you $325. Now, make sure you don't check the Apple Store credit option. Make sure you check the cash or uh, the, the regular check option. Um, because you want that money. Because they'll send you $325 for a speaker that, for me, when I got it on sale, I only paid $250 for. So I made money in the process. Um, now, I had to spend other money to get this because I wanted to have both so that I could do a comparison. But once I send this back, I will get my money back. No problem. Um, and that is my review of the JBL Extreme. And honestly, between the strap, which I'm putting on right now, and all the other features this thing has, I am very happy with this purchase. Because, put this on by the way, you put this speaker on like this, you can do things now and have a gigantic speaker on you. Now this is not gigantic as like a big, uh, like the Brookstone, I think, Big Blue Party or any of those huge ones that are clearly not meant to be portable. I mean, they're portable and that they move. That's about it. So this is what I still call the, the, the upper limit of the portable speakers, Bluetooth speakers. And when you compare it to the XL, there's just no comparison. And it's not even that it's lighter. It's heavier than the XL by a lot. The reason I say it's better is because the XL, first of all, didn't come with the strap, okay? It didn't come with the strap. And second of all, the strap hooks into these little jinky, I don't know what they are, little uh, fastening holes on the side. In addition, they're not even, I'm checking it. The, the, basically, it's a little metal billet of um, a little metal uh, hole that's kind of fitted into the plastic frame of the outside. Now, I feel like if you pull hard enough, that's just going to come right off, right? But this is fitted to two metallic aluminum bands that are part of the frame of the speaker. Second, the strap for this speaker, which when it came out was $299, the strap cost $30, okay? Now, let's, let's take, let me take a minute and think about that, okay? You're paid $300 for a speaker. And then on top of that, had to look, and you couldn't even find it in normal stores or anything. You had to buy it from the Beats website, and it was $30. Now, what kind of bullshit is that, all right? Whereas this comes with the strap. It's a good strap. It looks nice, and you can adjust it even if you're like like a munchkin. Like, I'm serious. Like, I can adjust this thing all the way down until, like, it's it's not even usable anymore. Like, I can just see if this will – let me see if it will go here. Like, this is the, this is the shortest – I can't even use this anymore. It's like it's like a like a little bib, all right? Like a like a speaker bib, okay? But I can adjust it. And if I was actually this short, that would be great. So in conclusion, please people, if you're gonna buy one speaker, one speaker at all, and you have three hundred dollars for the speaker. Yeah, I, now if you only have three hundred dollars, try to eat first, okay? But if you have three hundred dollars and you have it for a speaker, get the JBL Extreme. That is all I have to say. Um, you know, for the money, and I and I, and I, I am not one to to be a, 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 a this is it, this is the perfect thing ever because nothing is, but as close, at least currently, as it can get to perfect, that is the JBL Extreme. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate the views. Um, I appreciate your comments. 
Don't forget to uh, like the video if you did and um, leave me some comments. Um, as always, 